Hello, everybody. I'm Jim McMahon, and with me is Gorilla Metso. Hello, hello. We are continuing with our Blood Bowl 2020 leaks. We are going to be covering, uh, this is the most requested video we've had to date, uh, covering uh, the seasons, but also more importantly, the redrafting functionality within Blood Bowl 2020. Jim, let's get right into it. Give us an overview on the seasons first, how that should line up uh, if it's not readily apparent, and then let's go right into those uh, redrafting options. Yeah, so uh, so you know re uh, the way seasons would work is uh, if you're with a group of mates, like say five of you, you would play each other once. You'd play four games. That would be a season. If there's ten of you, you'd play each other once. There's nine games a season. That's how seasons work. It's pretty simple. <laughs> then after that season, you don't you you you've got several options. You could start a game from scratch. You could keep your ex existing teams, or you could redraft. Um, now, I think the game was meant to be played with redrafting, and I think like the big leagues on Blood Bowl 3 should redraft, and I think CCL should be redrafting as well. And So there you go. So what you do with the redrafting is the first thing you do, um, anyone who's got a miss next game, they get rid of the miss next game. That's pretty simple. And then you, you work out what your cap's going to be. Um, so it doesn't, well, you work out how much money you've got to work with. So you start off with a million gold pieces for a starting team. You take all the money in your treasury, and then you, you look at this formula here to give yourself more, more gold based on how many games you've played, how many games you've won, how many games you've drawn. And then they recommend a cap of 1.3 million. Um, but I mean, you, could, you, could you should be able to decide any cap you want, I, I believe. Yeah, it definitely seems wise to add in a cap just so you don't have a player who says, you know, who say goes undefeated and everyone else who might be newer at the game struggling that season or something like that. So one guy's going to come in, you know, with a, you know, a significant TV advantage, but there's nothing really to hold you to 1.3 million. It does seem like a pretty good number from where I'm sitting. Uh, but most important out of that section there to me seems like you should just take that into account and have a hard, a hard cap on the high end. Yeah, for sure. So once you've worked out how much money you've got to, to rebuild your team, uh, or continue your team, I guess I should say, it's, it's a bit of both actually. <laughs> um, so in this, as they recommend, 1.3 million. Um, what you can do is you can keep your assistant coaches, your cheerleaders, your apothecary, your re-rolls. So you don't have to pay double for re-rolls again, uh, you know, because you keep, you keep the ones you've already got. Um, so you don't need to pay double for re-rolls. That's pretty crucial. Um, you can get rookies at the cost they are on your team roster. Um, but the big point is any any players that you've already got. So let's say you've got like, you know, a blitzer with mighty blow tackle, uh, an orc blitzer with mighty blow tackle. He's worth 120k. Um, you can rehire him, but he will cost an extra 20k for each season he's played. So, and, and you know, obviously that's going to be like the first one, right? So the first time you redraft, it's it's going to be if you want to keep every single player on your team, that's going to cost two hundred and twenty k. So you're probably going to have to let some people go, even after one season. You're probably going to have to let people go and and redraft rookies and only keep you know certain players on your team. Yeah, and chances are though, chances are though, a lot of those players that you'd let go would be they just wouldn't have leveled up anyway so you wouldn't want to pay the premium for them you just rehire a, a new version of them effectively exactly yeah and that premium doesn't count for team value it only counts against your limit for redrafting so if the limit is 1.3 million you may you know may be very likely to end up with a 1.2 million if you bring back five players or whatever and uh, of course after two or three seasons, then it will start getting really expensive to bring back people for a long time. So it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to shape the, the meta. There's other rules about healing injuries, which you can read if you pause it, I guess. But it's not super, it's not super important. Like, permanent injuries will get healed sometimes, kind of. <laughs> at some point it's it's not super like the good thing is you can keep people because you can put them on a you can put them on like injured reserve if you like it's got a name but um it's like injured reserve uh temporarily retired that's what it is so you can temporarily retire players and then you can so you can you can eventually heal any injuries and you can heal niggling injuries but the the main thing to think about is 
you know, you keep your team alive, but everyone will start at roughly the same level and it won't just be one guy going to 3K TV and stuff. Yeah, at some point it's going to be like, is a zombie with uh, with Dirty Player worth it to get at the start of the season when you're likely to get one within a couple games at the premium cost of 20000 or even more if it's been multiple seasons? You know, things like that. Are, what are the decisions you're going to have to make uh, as the uh, team gets older and has uh, more and more su- su- success, especially if you're playing in a league with a hard cap? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it, it's like it's it's crazy, it, you know. It's crazy because with, without it's crazy to not have seasons in a way because without seasons, with this the way you can sculpt your team, choosing to get doubles, choosing to get stats, you know, teams will just skyrocket to three thousand TV. You know. I, that's yeah. what I think. Uh, attrition has been greatly reduced. The, um, Claw is only really good against armor 9. It's very marginal against armor 8. So Claw will be taken less. Um, there's no more piling on. Uh, you know, so attrition is greatly reduced. Maybe his dirty player Sneaky Git will be a thing. Honestly, Sneaky Git is actually quite powerful now. <laughs> um, so so there, there might be some attrition that way. But this is, I, I like the redrafting. You know, it gives you that element of football manager type thing of, you know, choosing who to pick, who to, who to sack and how to sculpt your team within, the, within restraints rather than just bloating up to massive TV. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I think if you're entering, you know, if you're just starting with Blood Bowl, it's brand new to you. You're entering a new small league, you know, with some friends and you're just kind of learning the rules. It might be a little bit daunting because it's a lot of it's a lot of strategizing and adding in in ways that are like, you know, you're just trying to get the basics down. But ultimately, I think it's going to be really good for the teams and really good for the longevity of a lot of leagues um, where, In my personal experience, you know, local leagues are usually two guys who are really committed and kind of excelling over everyone else. Uh, And then everyone else is kind of in the dregs there. So and, and, you know, if you want if you want to be able to do that over a longer period of time, over multiple seasons and not just have all your friends quit on you, having to redraft and and kind of keep your teams at the same peak is going to be pretty essential. Yeah, and and not and and also it's going to shape how you develop your players and everything, you know. So for example, if you're playing without redrafts, then you'll do things like shoot for a, a stat on your first level and on your second level and on your third level, you know. But then the same player, that that absolute same player, if you had fifteen game seasons, maybe they just start off getting a double and then they then they choose normals. And maybe if you're playing five game seasons that with with redrafts, that same player might just take all random primary skills. You know, so Absolutely. you can, it's going to totally change. Like there's there's going to be no like this is how you build, you know, orcs or this is how you build dark elves. It's going to be this is what you want to do in like a five game season with a thirteen hundred redraft. This is what you want to do with a fifteen game season with a fifteen hundred redraft. This is what you want to do with unlimited uh, redrafts you know this is what you want to do with no redrafts at all so it's really going to be all tailored to the situation and you're going to have to think about how you level your characters absolutely and so let me ask you now jim we uh you know you and i kind of come from more of a, a a blood bowl 2 online background you know playing in the ccl ladder which is you know a six week you know a six week uh competition where you just play as many games as you possibly can with one team enter a playoffs and then that team's gone forever. How does this, how does this in your perfect future, how does this shape some sort of blood bowl three, you know, mystery game uh, and their competition? Well, yeah, I mean, we're going to be limited by the game. That's number one, right? Um, Fumble, uh, you know, which is a great, great site fumble. Um, They've kind of decided they're going to have 15 game seasons and then after you've played 15 games, you you either redraft or you enter a tournament. Um, and so I think CCL could do something similar. So for example, you could they could do it with 14 games. And then after that 14, you play up to 14 games. And then if you want to play any more, you've got a redraft. And then you'll go up to 28. If you want to play any more, you redraft. Then you go up to 42. And 42, of course, being the limit of the Dode math calculation to see what you know your win rate and everything and your points to see if you qualify. So that would naturally lead it to three full seasons to get that, which is, you know, it doesn't have to be 14. It could be 15 or something. Um, but, it you know, I, I think that would be all right, even with this 1,300 
and in your just as it is in the book with 20k per season i think you could still do it something like 15 16 seasons and anything around that kind of value um, so because i think most of the teams that qualify for ccl playoffs only play about 30 games right 30 games or less probably so sounds about right yeah so you're only going to need one redraft and then you know meta game that a little bit and then build as high as you can for the playoffs so i think that would be fine i think without redrafts it would be a bit crazy because you you know you would get guys like Christopher playing 100 games and having you know a really high tv team with exactly what he wants and that's going to be pretty and also you know like when you think if you if you just make a new team and you're spinning if they've redrafted at 1300 they're going to be less likely to be 2000 or whatever and who knows if there's going to be a cap for how who you, who you can play and everything you know i think it's going to be it's going to bring all the tv values closer together with redrafts and fairer games for everybody really yeah and so there would be nothing stopping functionally there would be nothing stopping a team that's played played through and redrafted even multiple times versus a team that was just fresh you know fresh made and spinning for the very first time in the league exactly yeah that's the beauty of it. you could actually keep your team you wouldn't have to you wouldn't have to just start a new team every season you could actually keep your, your team that played two seasons let's say you failed to qualify for uh let's say you play, failed to qualify for C, for the ccl playoffs you play you've played 27 games so you you redrafted once now you've played 12 you just carry on playing this new season you could you could redraft at the start of you know whatever the date was but you know they could have some kind of system whereby you've got to redraft to enter you know you've got to be yeah. under the 1300 you you have to redraft you can't play without redrafting or, or a new team or a redraft it might not it might not be an option you know it might just be make a new team but if they could have the option whereby you could enter with a redrafted team to a cap of 1.3 million that would be incredible i think you know you could just yeah, totally keep I'm teams forever Imagine a world in the Blood Bowl online community in which you had almost the effect of, uh, of an esports setup where teams could persistently be competing in these uh, in these championship cups. We, you know, like like, like month after month, uh, rather than just being the same generic name team played by the same coach with that having having started over and playing 100 games to grind out exactly the skills he wanted. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that'd be really cool. Um, I agree. Well, that sounds like a uh, future we can hope for and uh, probably will never get, Jim. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but in the meantime, we definitely know that Blood Bowl 2020 is coming, and these are your redraft rules. I'm pretty excited to not be able to leave my house because of a lockdown <laughs> and not join a physical tabletop tournament and take advantage of these rules. But I'm sure glad they're still on the page. What do you think, Jim? Yeah, I think it's fantastic. And, you know, hopefully it, it all signs point to Blood Bowl 3 being on the way and following these rules. And I'm super hyped for that, to be honest. Excellent. Well, I think that's about going to do it for this section. Thanks again for having me. And again, folks, let us know what you think of redrafting. How would you apply it in a digital format for, you know, a mass group of people? Or how or how do you uh, want to run your, your local leagues with just a few friends? Let us know in the comments below. My name is Gorilla Metso. Thank you so much for having me as always, Jim. Thanks very much. And thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.